Good morning, gang. Happy Monday. Another week. <laughs> so actually recording this Monday morning here. It's about quarter to seven. So uh, we'll see how long it takes to get uploaded and go whatever. Uh, before I go into this morning's topic real quick, after yesterday's second video, okay, just the one on mental health, you know, a lot of you guys made comments, a lot of you guys sent me emails and things like that. And I will completely admit, Mrs. P even said, you know, something's bothering you. And yeah, this whole crap about uh, strikes and all this sort of stuff, it, it gets to me because, you know, we've all got to know each other, you know, and like I said, I care about you guys. And obviously a lot of you guys care about me too, so that's important. And so when we're told we have to shut up, that's just another kick in the teeth, like all the social distancing and stuff like that. You know, it's like, oh, now I can't go see other friends. You know, so, would be. But one of y'all sent me a, a very interesting email, and I wanted to read this to you because I thought it was good, all right? Uh, Johnny Finance, a lot of you guys might see him in the comments or whatever, but uh, said this was a post he received, and I thought I'd just take a look at it. It says, imagine being born in 1900. When you're 14 years old, World War I begins and ends when you're 18. 22 million people are dead. Shortly after that, a world pandemic called the Spanish flu, killing 50 million people. You get out alive and free, and you're 20. Okay? Then at age 29, you survive the global economic crisis that started with the collapse of the stock exchange, causing inflation and unemployment and hunger. Nazis come into power at age 33. You're 39 when World War II begins, and it ends when you're 45 during the Holocaust, and 6 million Jews have been killed. Okay. There will have been a total of more than 60 million dead. When you're 52, the Korean War begins. When you're 64, the Vietnam War begins and ends when you're 75. A baby born in 1985 believes his grandparents have no idea how hard life is. You know, they only survived several wars and disasters. Okay. A baby born in 1995, age 25 today, believes the end of the world is here when his Amazon package takes more than three days to show up, or if he doesn't exceed 15 likes for his posted photo on Facebook or Instagram. As Johnny's post said, in 2020, many of us live in comfort, have access to various sources of entertainment at home, and often have more than needed, okay? But people complain about everything. We have to change everything, right? We have electricity, we have phone, we have food, we have hot water, we have roof over their heads. For the person born in 1900, there's a lot of times in their life they didn't have a lot of that stuff, okay? Humanity survived much more serious uh, circumstances than we're going through right now, but they never lost the joy of life. And that was very poignant uh, after what I talked about yesterday and, you know, read that this morning and, you know, he's right, okay? It's like, okay, you know, I'm worried about smaller things. Uh, comparatively. We're worried about bigger things. Don't get me wrong, okay? You know, world communism is not exactly a small thing, but good perspective to have. All right, so into what I wanted to talk about this morning, and this is on food, and I know everybody's like, oh God, more stuff on food, but knowing what's going on and why. See, this this is where it gets interesting with what I'm going to tell you about. Uh we're pretty much past planting season. I mean, yes, you're going to be able, some places are going to be able to get fall crops in, but uh, not everybody. Okay. So, you know, you're, what you got growing now is the food that may have to take you through the winter. All right. Story comes out world's food supplies in jeopardy among climate disasters. Okay. And this isn't climate change crap. Okay. You know, I, I, I completely debunked it everything about climate change. Climate change is non-existent, okay? That's, you know, the, the biggest hoax put on man ever, okay? Though they're trying to beat it. Uh, now, this will have a lot more to do with the grand solar minimum, okay? But you're talking about, right now, what what's coming out. You know, floods in Germany, China, Turkey, India, scorching weather in the United States and Canada, okay? Frost across Brazil, 
I mean, this is these are all in places where you have huge populations and huge agricultural area. Okay, now, you know, you talk like I said, you know, all these floods torn tar- towns apart, trashed out farmland, killed hundreds of people. Okay, uh, we all know here in the states about we've talked many times about the dry dry weather in. Uh, the, on, I would say the West Coast, but basically the western half of the country, okay? Here's the catch, all right? Where we've been talking about it for a while, now all of a sudden the mainstream is starting to wake up to it. And the reason I tell you this is important, many, 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 many of you have have asked me questions. How do I get my spouse on board? How do I get my kids on board? You know, whatever would be. Okay, food and the price of food is going to be the way to do it, all right? You know, by now, you've already heard the grumblings over the kitchen table with your spouse or your adult kids are going, you know, Mom, why is food so freaking expensive? You know, I can't afford to eat more than ramen or something, okay? Well, you know, now when you're getting... The United Nations Food and Agriculture uh, Organization coming out and saying that the food price index is at a decades level high. Okay, Goldman Sachs is worried about food inflation. Okay, Deutsche Bank has uh, is worried about food inflation. Rabobank is warning about uh, surging food prices that could exacerbate uh, global food insecurity. This, this is what happens. Guys, countries go to war over food, okay? Ha, have throughout history, all right? And we look at what's going on with China. China trying to buy up U.S. farmland. China buying up all the North African areas to be able to uh, grow food with them. Food is the one thing that countries will do anything for. Now, Again, you go into the depopulation stuff. Well, you know, we can either grow more food or we can depopulate the world. Well, all right, you got both sides at work right now. There was a study I read, I think it was on Saturday, that says by 2050, we will need to double the food output of the world to feed the people, okay? Because more and more people. And again, it's not the United States, guys, okay? We're on, actually, stagnant in population, okay, birth, not bringing people in from other countries, okay, yes, the population of the United States is going up, it's not because Americans are having more kids, it's because everybody's flooding the borders, that's why the population's going up, right, it's not the United States, but as the population of the world goes up, obviously, you need more food, which means you need more food, farmland and stuff. The reason that you have all these people coming up, you know, the powers that be, as we call them, uh, saying that we need to get off a meat-based diet, that has something to do with it, the you know, population, because it takes more land to raise a cow. Obviously, the cow eats the grass. Okay, It takes more grazing land to raise a cow than it does to raise a vegetable. I get that, okay? I totally understand that. But why would you uh, take away the normal diet from a, the, the Western countries? Let's put it this way, a more meat-based diet. You know, where the population growth is coming from is in some of, most of the third world countries. Well, introduce the meat-based proteins there or whatever, and let that become the normal food there. That makes more sense, okay? Now, fortunately for us, and this comes from another one of y'all, all right, uh, sent me an article that the animal, agricultural, uh, animal agriculture organizations have launched something called a protein pact, okay? And this is 12 different organizations representing farmers and companies who are you know, the ones that raise the majority of your meat, your poultry, your dairy, whatever it would be, okay? And they have come up with a plan for sustainable meat production to to 
maintain from the way I read this from to maintain the uh, food chain, I guess, if you will, in the Western world, while still appeasing the the loony left here with all their cow fart issues. Okay, you know, so we're and I'll I'll link this so you guys can read it. But my whole point is, guys, is multiple here. If you have people in your family that aren't on board with putting stuff away, take them to the grocery store or make them balance the checkbook or send them to the grocery store and say, here's a hundred bucks. This is our, this is our budget for groceries. Go get groceries and let them come home and go one of two things. Well, here, either I got two bags of groceries. Good. That's what you're eating on for the next two weeks. And then they go, where's all the food? Well, you went, you did the shopping or they're going to come home and say, holy shit. You know, I didn't buy a pot roast because it was seven ninety eight a pound, so I bought, you know, chicken thighs instead or whatever it would be. You know, so, you know, wake them up that way. But th- this food is key, guys. You got to grow it. You got to, you got to stock it. Okay. I, we've talked about getting sides of beef and everything like that. Somebody was telling me the other day that now the butchers are backed up through 2023. Uh, you know, two years, you know, great. I'll be hungry in two years. Uh, but start getting what you can. Can it, buy it in cans. I mean, Mrs. P and I spent the, uh, spent about an hour yesterday taking all those potatoes and putting them in those root cellars that I built that I showed you guys months back how to do. Uh, you know, there's a half a half a bale of straw was all it took to put them in there, and we've got you know two big old cans full of potatoes. And you know, here it is. It's 90 degrees in Tennessee, and when I open those things up and put my hand in there, on the sides of those cans they were cold. You know, so. It works, but guys, you're seeing food prices go up. They ain't going down. Whatever you can, if it's five, if it's 10, if it's 20 bucks, put more food away. You may not think it's going to make a difference, but five bucks a week, 10 bucks a week adds up. Okay. And trust me, you're going to thank me later. Have a good Monday, guys. Pimble out.